Grammarly is one of my favourite tools for writers. Hi there, my name is Brian Collins from Become a Writer Today and Grammarly has just rolled out some great new tools which will help you find and fix errors in your writing fast and which would also help you fix matters of style. And in this short video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the updates. So the first new tool that Grammarly has rolled out is a rich text editor. In the past, when you'd paste your text into Grammarly, it wouldn't have any formatting. In other words, your text wouldn't be in bold or italics and so on. Now I have here on screen an article that I wrote in the writing app IA Writer, and it's nearly ready for publication. You can see here it has items in bold, in italics and so on. So I'm gonna select all of this text and I'm gonna paste it into Grammarly so you can see what the rich text editor looks like. So let's just move this out of the way. Now I've got the Grammarly desktop application open for Mac, which is what I use, but you can do this in the web either. And I'm gonna paste in all of that text. So you can see here that Grammarly has brought over all of the formatting. So I have my subheadings in bold and I also have uh, my hyperlink and I also have bullet points and so on. So this is a great way of ensuring that the formatting matches what you're going to publish on your site or on your blog or wherever it is you're going to use this particular piece of writing. And I can put the title up here. And I can also go into individual parts of the my manuscript and I can apply formatting if I want using bold, italics, underline. Uh, I can change this to H1 or H2. I can add hyperlinks. I think I showed you a bullet point list here at the bottom, so I can change this to a numbered list, or I can change it back to a bullet point list, or I can remove um, all of the formatting all together. So and I can also see the total word count for the document in question. So this is a great way of just making sure your writing has that bit of visual polish, particularly if you're writing for the web. The next particularly useful update is you can set goals for your writing based on who you're publishing the article for. So let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna click here on goals and you can see here that I've said that my audience is an expert. In other words, they'll probably understand the topic of journal writing or some of the other ideas about entrepreneurship that I have in this article. But let's say I'm writing this for an audience that probably doesn't know the topic that well, then I can pick general and I'll show you the change that Grammarly will make now. So I'll just click done. Grammarly will re-scan the document and it will identify you know, troublesome sentences that a general audience you know, might need some clarification with. So it's highlighted one here, which wasn't highlighted under expert, and it's highlighted it in blue. So this is a suggestion rather than something I need to fix. And if I click on the sentence, I get some context here in the editor on the right hand side. And it's just suggesting that this sentence is difficult to read. And I might want to remove unnecessary words or split it into two sentences. Now, because this is a quote, you know, it's up to me whether I want to do this or not. Um, and that's one thing I would say with, you know, tools like this, it's always up to you whether you want to make the change or whether you want to leave it as is. Here's another example. So this is a wordy sentence. He or she picks a symbol for each habit like a cross or circle. So that, so that is quite wordy. So I could just say something like the writer uh, and I could put a full stop here and I could break up the sentence so it's a bit more concise. There's a couple of other goals that I want to show you that are particularly helpful if you're editing your work. So let's go back and click on goals and I'm gonna pick academic. And then Grammarly will take a second to scan through the document. And now you see it's highlighted some of my sentences where I use contractions. So I've said it's IT apostrophe S or it is. But if you're writing for academia, which is what I picked there, you know, it, it's probably more appropriate that you write out the full word and say it is. So this is particularly useful, you know, if you're writing something like an academic paper or a literature review. You're getting additional suggestions that will help you write for that particular audience, for your lecturer or for whoever's critiquing your work. But what if you're writing for business? Well, let's change it from academic to business and I'll show you what happens. Grammarly will take a moment to scan the document and it's you can see here it's removed or said it's okay to use the contractions, but it's highlighted and so on. So let's see what's wrong with that. And it's basically suggesting that that's casual writing and not something that I would use if I'm writing a business document, you know, for a boss or for a client. Uh, but it's probably something I could use in a more informal piece of writing, like a blog post. And again, that's up to me whether I want to remove it or not. So let me show you two more of the goals. I'm going to pick creative because I know sometimes, you know, fiction writers use Grammarly to check their manuscripts. And if I click creative, you can see here a lot of the purple lines are removed because uh, Grammarly is giving me a bit more freedom 
you know about informal language and so on. Another one that I sometimes use is technical. So, you know, we're writing a technical document for a client perhaps. Then it's gone back and highlighted, you know, the friendly language that I might need to consider removing. And it's also highlighted one here, will do. So let's see what's wrong with that. Future tense with technical writing. And it's explaining the technical writing is almost always written in the present tense. So you can see here, it's giving me a bit more context and insights that I can use to adjust my writing for a different audience. One question I get asked a lot is about the plagiarism detector. Now, I don't actually plagiarize my work, obviously, but the plagiarism detector is still a useful tool if you write nonfiction. And let me show you how. So I'm going to just click on the plagiarism detector. It'll take a second to scan the web for, you know, elements from the article in question that have been used elsewhere. Once it's completed the scan, you can see here that it's indicating that this piece of writing, this quote was used online. So let's click on that and see what happens. So it's opened up a blog post about journal writing and in that blog post, I can find the quote in question. So let me just highlight the quote and then search for it. Yes, so here is the quote in question. Now, I didn't actually plagiarize this. I interviewed the person who wrote this blog post and they gave me permission to use this quote. But how you could use this is, let's say you're writing an article and you can't remember where you got you know, something from, you can't remember the source or you just want to cite it. Well, then you could use the plagiarism detector to you know, find the original sources uh, for your work. Or alternatively, if you're reviewing someone else's work, you could also use it that way as well, just to sense check it. Some of the other tools in Grammarly that are worth checking out are the delivery and engagement. And this depends if you're going to spe you know, speak the piece of writing, use it as a podcast or where you're going to publish it. But it's saying here that my engagement here is a bit bland and it's suggesting words that I could use. And in this case, it's suggesting that my delivery is slightly off. And yes, just as an example of re weak writing and that's something I might want to remove. Now, one question I get asked all the time is, should I use the free or premium version of Grammarly? Or I don't have a budget for a tool like this, what should I do? And it's worth pointing out that the free version of Grammarly is quite powerful. It'll help you check your grammar, spelling and punctuation without issue. And it'll help you find and fix errors that Word probably can't. And you can check out my other video for examples of that. But if you have the budget or if you're ready to upgrade, the premium version contains some of the features that I walked you through in this video. You can check for compelling vocabulary. You can check your word choice, consistency and so on. And you can also go through the formality level, which I walked you through in this video. And you can also check the readability of your text. So if you'd like to try the premium version, I can give you a discount for Grammarly using the link which you'll find below this video. So if you've got questions about this grammar checker or if there's something else you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments section. Thanks for watching.